In this video, we're going to take a look at feeding relationships and really look at it and examine how energy is transferred in ecosystems and how um, one organism can consume another and actually get that energy and where the energy initially comes from. So that's what we're going to be looking at in this video. So organisms of an ecosystem are connected by their feeding relationships. And so what, how we can observe that is, um, in nature is by looking at uh, something like a food web, like in our image here. And this shows us the transfer of energy from one organism to another. For example, um, this seal here transfers its energy to this other leopard seal which provides energy to killer whale. And these are based off of feeding relationships. So the leopard seal will eat this seal, and the killer whale will eat the leopard seal. And so the arrows are drawn so that the point of the arrow shows the direction of energy. And if you look at this here, we've got um, primary producers, herbivores, and carnivores. And so we've only got one producer in this whole food, food web, uh, one herbivore, and then a number of carnivores. We're going to talk about these terms a little bit more later but it's important to, to know of these and, and to keep these in mind. To begin, um, only certain organisms, certain organisms can create their own food through photosynthesis. And photosynthesis is the process of sunlight being trapped or um, collected and using that sunlight to convert it into sugars. Um, and organisms that do this are, are called producers. And plants are probably the main photosynthetic organism you would think of. Uh, they take in sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water, and they produce as a byproduct oxygen, and they also produce sugars or glucose. Glucose is a type of sugar. Algae and some bacteria are also able to photosynthesize, and so we call these organisms um, producers because they are... Producers are also called autotrophs. Autotrophs um, because they make their own food. And they get the energy they need from the sun as well as in the soil and pass that on to organisms that eat them. They get the essential nutrients that they need, including phosphorus, nitrogen, carbon, and water, as we've talked about previously. They get it from the soil. So plants not only are using sunlight, but they also have to collect the necessary materials um, like phosphorus and nitrogen from the soil. Organisms that produce their own food are autotrophs. It's essentially the same meaning as a producer. It's just another term or way that we can describe the types. Now, once a plant uses that sun energy to, to produce glucose, um, that energy gets transferred eventually to other animals. And animals that eat plants are called herbivores. Plants that eat animals, uh, excuse me, animals that eat plants are called herbivores. All animals are also heterotrophs because they cannot make their own food. And that applies to any organism. Any organism that cannot produce or make its own food is referred to as a heterotroph. There's a lot of overlapping terms um, when we're looking at ecosystems and food chains and food webs um, because there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of similarities in, in some of these vocabulary words. Um, and so heterotrophs get the sunlight energy that they need from other plants that they eat. Animals that eat other animals are called carnivores, and they gain their sunlight energy and calories um, by eating other animals. And you maybe would think of, um, um, maybe think that a, a human could be a carnivore, but in actuality, carnivores are, are organisms that just eat um, other animals. Um, so, the, so all of their calories come from uh, other organisms, um, being other animals. And so that's important to keep in mind. Humans are considered omnivores, and we're considered omnivores because we and other organisms that are omnivores are adapted to eat both plants and animals. And so we get our energy from um, both of them and not just one of them, so omnivores. Uh, there's quite a few omnivore species on the planet, including humans. Now, now that we kind of know all these basic terms here, uh, we can get into the more specifics, the feeding relationships part. And so with this, food chains uh, are one tool that we can use to illustrate feeding relationships. And this shows a linear or a simple step-by-step -step transfer of energy from one source to another. And all of this begins with the sun. The sun provides energy to the producer. And in this case, it happens to be algae. Algae then provides energy 
to the herbivore, which in this case is the flagfish. The flagfish then provides energy to the bass, which provides energy to the bird, and to the alligator. This is a food chain because it shows just a single linear step-by-step-by-step -step -step transfer of energy. So for our image here, uh, I would like you to draw a path um, on the image that would show the transfer of energy from one step to the next. And I'd also like you to label uh, a few of the different um, categories here. And the things that we're going to be labeling would be a carnivore, an omnivore, herbivore, heterotroph, autotroph, producer, first level consumer, second level consumer, and third level consumer. Got a little cut off there, but that's our last one. Go ahead and pause the video, take a moment to do this, and then play the video when you're ready to continue. So hopefully you've had a chance to label these and draw arrows. Um, the grass uh, is receiving sunlight energy, so that would be a producer or an autotroph. The uh, cricket or grasshopper is an herbivore. It's a heterotroph and it's a first level consumer. The bird is a second level consumer and it's an omnivore um, because it can get, it will eat the grasshoppers. And we should probably have another arrow here that would show uh, energy being transferred from the grass or more specifically maybe seeds or nuts um, to the bird and so that would make it an omnivore heterotroph second level consumer. And lastly the large bird, the eagle, is a carnivore, a heterotroph, and a third level consumer. One of the really surprising things maybe in a food chain is that energy is lost to heat, waste, and respiration. Heat, waste, and respiration uh, energy is lost to as you move up the food chain or as you move down a food chain. And actually, it's really uh, quite a large number. Uh, about 90% of that energy is lost to the system each time it's transferred. So in the image here, we start with light energy or chemical energy, and that energy goes to the primary producer, starts at 100%. But from the transfer of energy, so maybe a cow comes along and eats the producer that's a plant, and that transfer of energy, so from the primary producer to the first level consumer, a lot of that energy is lost in the form of heat or through respiration. And actually, 90% of that energy is lost. And it doesn't stop or it doesn't, it doesn't occur just from, one, from the first level to the second. It continues to occur. So each increase in the food chain or a consumer level, we're losing approximately 90% of that energy. That's a lot of energy. And so this is why we see many more producers, producers in an ecosystem than herbivores or carnivores because at each one of these levels from the producers to the herbivores, 90% of that energy is being lost. 90% of that energy is being lost. Now this doesn't mean that the animals are necessarily going to be smaller. It just means that there's going to be less of them in number because there's um, a loss of so much energy. Now, decomposers uh, are also very important to an ecosystem because they help to release nutrients uh, back into the ecosystem or the environment. And they do this by breaking down or actually getting their own energy from waste or dead autotrophs and heterotrophs. Basically, they re-release carbon, nitrogen, and other matter back into the environment. And examples of these would include fungi and bacteria. Uh, bacteria and fungi help to break down uh, dead plants and animals and decompose them as well as waste and re-release the minerals and, and the organic compounds back into the environment. So now we're going to do uh, an, an, another activity with the same picture here. I'd like you to do the same thing where you draw arrows to show the transfer of energy, for example, from the grass to the grasshopper. But this time I'd like you to start with a thousand kilocalories of energy for the grass and then at each level show how much energy uh, is actually being transferred from the grass to the grasshopper, etc. Go ahead and pause the video, and then when you're ready, continue. So hopefully you had a chance to solve this, and you should have hopefully found that the grass, as we mentioned, will have a 1,000 kilocalories of energy, the grasshopper 100, the bird 10, and the large bird 1. Because at each one of these levels, 90% is lost, or 10% is transferred. So 10% of 1,000 kilocalories is going to be 100. 10% of 100 kilocalories is going to be 10, etc. 
So now that we've learned a little bit more about uh, different types of organisms in a feeding relationship and we've talked about food chains, we can put all of that together to produce something called a food web. And a food web is a realistic representation of how organisms interact based off of their feeding relationships or how they connect. And so, for example, you'll see that this is a lot more complex than the food chain. Or a food chain, um, in our previous example, we started with algae, went to the flagfish, to the bass, to the bird, to the alligator. But now we've got all these other organisms in here. And you'll notice, oftentimes, it's not just one organism that's consuming another or providing energy to another. For example, this killfish is providing or energy or is eaten by a bass, a bird, and a frog. The killfish is getting its energy from uh, shrimp and worms. The shrimp and the worms is getting its energy from algae as well as bacteria and various fungi. So the food web is far more complex and we have a nice key up here that helps to show what the different uh, colors, uh, the circles under the organisms represents, whether it's a carnivore, an omnivore, producers, herbivores, etc. The other organism we haven't talked about is a scavenger. And the scavenger is kind of similar to a decomposer. It basically helps to um, clean up the waste in the environment. So decomposers and scavengers are really, really important uh, in a waste in order to be able to help maintain a, a ecosystem with material and, and matter and nutrients that are flowing throughout the ecosystem. One of the last things that I would like you to do is to, uh, on this image, I'd like you to um, I'd like you to label producers, herbivores, omnivores, and carnivores. And probably the easiest way to do that would simply be just by writing the first letter next to them. So for example, um, the plant here, this plant here, is a producer. So I'm going to write a P next to it for producer. And I want to do that for all of the other organisms here. And I'll give you some time to do this. And so when you're ready, you can uh, pause the video and then play it once you're done and check for the key uh, in the next slide. So hopefully you had a chance to go through and to identify these. And I've labeled them out here for, for you as well so you can check and see. And hopefully you've identified these various organisms as producers, herbivores, omnivores, or carnivores. A couple other things to add. Each feeding level is called an energy level, and you can think of these as steps away from the original energy source, which is the sun. There's various trophic levels, um, including decomposers, producers, first order consumers, second order consumers, sometimes even third, fourth, or fifth order consumers. Third, fourth, and fifth order consumers are very rare because 90% of energy is lost um, as you move away from the first level or from the sun. One last thing to finish up and to help you kind of continue to think of this, make a list of everything you ate during your last meal. Identify each item as either an item from a producer or a consumer. And if it's a consumer, try to identify which level consumer it might be. That's a basic introduction to feeding relationships, ecosystem uh, organization, and how we can classify organisms as producers, autotrophs, heterotrophs, and different various levels of consumers.